Iwanja Hotan, Vakidum, Tinyam Ahot, Mia Story Alegre de estar aquí con todos ustedes. I see so many people I haven't seen in a while. Um, Yes, and, and, you know, thank you for all the work of having me here. I, I also want to say that um, a few months back, uh, I was working with some native elders who live here. Uh, they're, they're from the Spider Woman Theater, the Miguel Sisters. And I didn't have a place near where they live uh, to, to do these oral history interviews. And Brett and the team here very generously let us come in and do our recordings here. Um, yeah, and so there's just something I think very important um, about the generosity of, of the space. So um, yeah, I really appreciate that. I'm gonna read uh, poems that are that are uh, a little bit newer. They'll probably be in an, another collection. Um, yeah, I'm putting my little timer on here. Um, and Aishan, it's really great to be alongside you tonight. Your work is, has been so important uh, to my students in particular. So I might have to hitch, hitch you up for a class visit after this. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> um, and I'm really interested in like different ways of occupation and uh, furniture in particular. And so this poem is headed toward that. Um, there's a quote from George Nakashima um, who was held in the Minidoka um, JAIC. Uh, that's also something that uh, happens on my reservation as well. Usually there's a reservation and then there was the uh, Japanese American internment or incarceration camp. Pandemic furniture. It's violence. A condition of occupation complement of its occupants and their furniture each uncountable as damage. Furniture determines an individual's world in relationship to the universe, not the universe itself. Furniture and its personal belongings. I am holding my mother's purse and her phone. This hospital chair is an event of my body. Flexed calf, ankle hooked around the chair leg, the confusion of chair and the body, our unrestful living, Seri Nan's slum of legs. I'm always abiding the bodies who don't love us to abide the body I love. One of these bodies is pandemic. The other is an emergency. A bed is shaped for what is done there. My mother is in the hospital bed. I tell her and her wound, rest, but don't dream. Abide, but don't dwell. The furniture beetles arrive with their instruments of work. A group of furniture beetles is called an infection. One bores into my mother's foot. Why her foot, I ask. Appendages, furniture, echoes the furniture beetle, descending the wound. My mother tells a joke. A coffin is not furniture, but its handles are. I try moving my mother's wound from her foot to the other side of the room. But I am bad at domestics, and the wound remains. I'm considering becoming part of the furniture, the wound says, spilling dust from itself or my mother. Furniture is not the body but what they do to ours. I press the red button. The nurse arrives, says the wound has remained long enough to be classified by the health department as an abode. I look inside. The wound has a bed with a full set of linens, the entire dining room, a dresser with drawers of silk stocks, a small pistol with a wooden grip. The nurse says, Let's not say occupation. Let's say your mother is a host. I tell my mother, next time we're asking for an unfurnished wound. My mother says they don't require a table and chairs to make use of us.
Colony. The coyotes are on the beach, vacuuming tonight's terrible light with their eyes. They puncture the river's sleep with holes of blue-green eyeshine. The river rolls over, awake. The coyotes are baptizing the rabbits, dunking them in the shallow water. The rabbits play dead in the coyotes' mouths, but jolt and cry out when they break the water. The river is cold, and they shake the rabbits. I've never seen a rabbit swim, and no rabbits will swim tonight. The river, because it is the scene of their crimes. The river, because it will clean us of what the rabbits have done. The rabbits are not from here. They come from another territory of night, from a different moon. The rabbits are white, which is not a color, but how fast it twitches. The rabbits disappear our women. Maybe not these rabbits yet but rabbits like these and soon. White rabbits as call and response, a multiplication. The game where everyone holds hands, then someone squeezes, sends a signal, and everyone sends the same signal they receive. If that game were forever and played by rabbits. Rabbits so white their eyes are pink. The rabbits took my cousin, they collapsed her down to a greasy spot somewhere. Like when your brother backs the truck out of the driveway and the truck leaves behind an iridescent liqueur on the ground. So you sprinkle sand over it to absorb the stain. The coyotes are a night shift, a labor of shades against the pebbled shore. They are a range of blue black mountains reorganizing weight, a dusk. With more night happening, the rabbits become stranger. Their ears are slicked back like men. I try not to ask myself, what is a rabbit? I can't explain the rabbit, but I feel it. I've felt it my entire life, that there's something wrong with the world. I don't know what it is, but it's there, a white blot in my mind. The question distracts me and a rabbit kicks its body free. The noisy shadow tangles and disrupts the coyote's feet. One of the coyote's shape transforms. It opens all of its mouths and recaptures the rabbit. At first the cry of a rabbit is the cry of a baby. Then the cry becomes something there are no words for. The cry of a rabbit will make you cry unless you are hungry or the rabbit has pulled your cousin out of your life by her hair. The coyotes plunge the rabbits into the river four times. One of the rabbit's ears flap in the wind like empty violet shirt sleeves. Each time they are sunk in the water, the rabbits become more quiet. The silence embers the coyote's eyes copper, chrysocolla. Some of the rabbits hang upside down, staring off and soothed by the moon, who is also soaked with river and whose light trickles out from the middle of the water to the shore in tremors. Wounds move this same drenched way. The mesquite trees along the jetty are tap-rooted into the water. When you gash a mesquite trunk or cut its branches, its skin seeps red-gold sap weeps and crusts an amber blister. The rabbits wish to begin healing, but their wounds are happening now. The rabbits wish to cicatrix. Rabbits are always too late. The rabbits' cries have become choked with water or the coyote's teeth, most likely with blood and fur, a burbling. The river and its bullfrogs are also sounds. A fish leaps from the water and falls back into it. I should have said the rabbits were screaming, not crying. I am the one crying. On nights like this, everything is wet as tears. The coyotes move in a group, how mourners move around a pyre, how authorities move to the door of a family whose daughter or mother has gone missing. 
not a tight pack, but a breathing. How fingers brush one another on their own hand. The coyotes' tails are down. The rabbits aren't saying anything anymore. They were another kind of quiet before this, before the screaming. The rabbits have never wanted to talk about what they have done. This rabbit quiet is a new quiet. Tufts of pale fur rock in a foam onto the shore, then off, back to, and off again. It never settles. The coyotes clean the rabbits with the river and clean us of the rabbits. They lick the terrible light from one another's faces and eyes. But what the rabbits have done is still done. The coyotes know this and cry the spilling moonlight back to the moon. The moon crusts and closes. The coyotes leave the beach one at a time. We are all clean and lonely. I'm writing a little bit longer poem, um, which should make you nervous because this next one's even longer than those ones. <laughs> um, yeah, so the, this is uh, this poem. I'm, I'm reading excerpts from this poem that is a bit longer, but um, it's something I'm trying to kind of think about a language. Um, a language of my desert um, and a language that kind of comes before, you know, whatever life forms we, we have imagined uh, began with, with our human life form. And so, um, yeah, this is, uh, this poem is called Duned. Uh, the dunes are an important place where I come from because it's where, um, I mean, the Colorado River has dumped silt for hundreds and hundreds of years. Now it's, of course, endangered, but it's dumped silt all across uh, the valley where I live, and so there are lots of dunes. And um, they're usually associated with, like, kind of places of power uh, in my community. And so this is kind of a series of just of images, and I'm, I, I'm kind of investigating what happens to, to the eye in this poem. Excerpts from Doomed. The worst work of my hands is in English. I'm a chiral body writing into what I cannot coincide. I've come to the mountain to bless these hands back, clay, clod, and gypsum, a way my body has been and will become. I rename one hand occupied territory, call to the other Amante Verde and the mountain sobs its horn blend to the surface. I am known in this place of creation and cascabel. Mojave greens are my relatives. I holograph in the ambient heat green quicked with copper. Don't play with snakes, they say. Don't play with your own power. Beneath the granite boulders, the hibernaculum cools, empty with shed skins, their spectered shells curled ribbons of fried light, the pressure of molecule and memory. Atmosphere bears touch on loop, apparates everything it has held, the salted swastics of their bodies, thick, rope-heavy, a scent you have to lift. My fleshlight cleaves their old energy eyes, slips each slit of limonite and aperture. In them I am struck, a fever image. They coil into their handless work of transmutation, into radio sensation, rattling the hair on my forearms. She recognizes me not as human, but as her own imagination. I am granite reorganized, a formation yet forming. I dream with the mountain because I am of the mountain. Grief for my elemental life respires my body. My snakes lick me from the wind like a chemical, return me to electric signal, a small web of lightning suturing the mouth to the skull. Pleasure unlanguaged and noise. I was dreamed into being. I was the dreamer. Skin fleshes the world it's made of in overwhelm. 
cloud shadow drifts a gray whale across the salt flats. A periphery of white halite crust surrounds its slow shade. My lover crystallizes this same way along the ridges of my knuckles and back of my hand, the dorsal side, as we also call a fin. I surfaced from deep submersion. There is no pleasure not earthen or wet. Ancient ocean, we say, and we mean every body. Sand's gentle crust of berm edging the wash. The desert a hot pie, juiceless yet swelling mirage. The neon red sign of a jackrabbit's spine eaten to its glow, dropped from the sky, flickers in the bleach light gushing the open land. How much love can a desert drink to bone? How many bodies pressed beneath this tectonic pie? A shelled vehicle in landscape, rust burning slow bleed of oxide having laced the chases, licked the light bucket to its chrome edges. A ram's scattered skeleton, empty lake of pelvis, desert grapevines threading the bone sockets, tugging the jaw V deeper into the canyon. Its broken horn is a curl of gold telephone I hold to my eye. I am dislocated. Some knowledge is not mine, some is, but I haven't arrived there yet. A long time ago, the wind licked the coyote's skull to glass. This is how we happen. Adam born, I bend back the Adam world. My inheritance is hydrogen. How rain and clouds happen to one another. Wet, though risen up from dust. Abundant. We have no word for God. It is sky because someone said it was. Until then, it was only what was in it. Giant fish with pharyngeal teeth, orange sand, clou sand clouds, and amo. The bighorn sheep made of stars and staggered spear still warm from the warrior's hand. Its shattered torso notching the night. The first wound was a clock. Our hunger. We ate the mountain sheep. Now our moon is a curve of cold fat congealing on a blued bone and lives in daylight, diurnal leftover. Over night's black dunes, we follow the trail of Amo's white face. If I speak of love, who will believe me? The only poets in this desert are Beryl and Jasper. Thunder is not thunder, but the air broken by lightning. My lover backlit like a thunderhead, strapped with night until the softness of her hips disrupts, her light wet hands and cock. I am the sound I make breaking in a room. We are always becoming from somewhere. Desire is a blood colored worm flexing the sand sea around me. I have a power I am learning to be careful with. They say when you see Nume, she's already been watching you. The stroke her long tail drags and the sand disappears where the loose wash turns granite outcrop. Looning and lonely, I thundercat. Stalk myself through wind-flooded canyons. Watch myself happen to me in the map of my hand. In the beginning, we didn't understand the bullet. It had no head, no arms or legs. Menementic, we said. It crossed the water. We named it Anyako Oren. We named it of the sun. We had no word for shore except how water touches land. They gave us the word for shore for their bullet to arrive on, then said our flesh was also shore. So we called the bullet bullet. We name things for what is done there. The injuries of becoming human. Tu achk a shoulder blade from turtle shell, hand from wing, the carpus erupting petals of wrist, bone flower, flesh, bats ripen like fruit in the lava fields, in volcanic caves of basalt, dusk buds their breathing wings, flowering angel beasts. The bats remember when we loved ourselves and called so tenderly into twilight that our words brought us the throbbing world mosquito and blood, kenakinum. Even the eye's small water will evaporate to quench the sun. 
I searched the rain from the tongues of my skin. It is four months away. The horse has been dead in the dunes all summer. Sun-chromed ravens in early devotion opened each bright window along its bloated belly. Unthreaded red curtains. Desert as Plutonian shore. The torso open, a sand-torn sail of hide flapping above the funeral boat. In Mojave, a horse is what it does and how it does it, but our word for boat is a wooden box. Mesquite pods drip in light from turquoise branches. Coyotes mistake the pool for moon water. If the shepherds don't poison the coyotes, the coyotes will eat the pods and scat them out. Scarification the obligation of breaking of rock and whelm. Every scar loses its wound. In the valley of Loth, I shift shape and ache, become 100 coyotes in the Anal Grove, weeping from every fleshed door of my body. The land of death is a doomed land. Serik, Sal Ai, Sal At. We burn our dead, we say, because we do. Touch me, I say, because it's a story we become. Gracias.